The other thing I wanted to talk about, multi-site obviously is a big, it's a big thing for this e-release, internal e-release, which is going to be a CI 3.0 that comes in Q3 calendar year 17. The other thing that will come is support for encryption. And we have actually essentially two encryption support, and then we will have two encryption support. Link encryption, which is nothing new, it's MaxSec, right? Which we have had on the Nexus 7K for quite some time. And what is new is what we call VXLAN encryption, which is a, essentially a multi-hop encryption, which is specifically, I talk about this here because this is specifically relevant for multi-site. And why? Because, okay, for MaxSec, I can do MaxSec obviously inside the fabric between leaf and spine. It's a no-brainer, in case, in case someone doesn't consider the data center secure enough. I can do MaxSec between the border leaves and the external WAN edge device, assuming that the WAN edge device supports MaxSec. I can do MaxSec with the host, right? But what is important, if I do a multi-site environment, I can do MaxSec at the link level between the spine and the devices in the, what we call the interpon network or the interside network. And what is new is this, what we call CloudSec is also called INS InsiemeSec because it's something that came from the Insieme team, which is essentially encapsulating, uh, en encrypting, sorry, the VXLAN traffic side to side, right? And this is a requirement, especially in the federal space, everybody, because this network could be a public network, everybody needs to have this sort of, it's still a point to point, but it's not at the link level, is, is at the VTEP to VTEP level, right? So it's still a point-to-point -point concept, it's side to side. So if I have six sites that I want to interconnect, I will create security association with each site, right? But I encrypt all or part of the traffic, there will be a capability of doing a, a selective uh, encryption, if I want, of the traffic that goes between the sites, right? Yeah, so one thing why Mexec is so famous because it's at not really a much of latency. What is about CloudSec regarding to latency? The latency that he adds to yeah, the... When you add the encryption to the... <laughs> That's another good question, which I have no clue, but I think we're talking about microsecond of latency, right? And here we're talking, remember, multi-site, we multi-pod, we support today 10 milliseconds between the pod. We multi-site, we will go to 150 milliseconds because obviously the assumption is sites could be really different region, right? Completely different region. So if this is 150 milliseconds, I think the, the, the latency added by the encryption is going to be absolutely negligible. And what uh, encryption algorithm do you do? <sighs> I'm not a security expert, but we have a, it, it does. This is INSEC, right? INSEC, CloudSec. And this is GCM 256, 128. 256, 128, we have, we have all the different, I have all the list for you if you want. It's not IPSec. You invented your own encryption format. Uh, no, actually, they're, re they're, okay, sorry, they're reusing the, um, what's the find in MaxSec, just running a different layer. Correct. It's a MaxSec done at the, at the yes, exactly, the VXLAN la layers. But, but still, it's proprietary stuff. Uh, we use a standard encryption mechanism, right? Now, we are the first one that we will support. Creative layers. <laughs> sure, but, you know. So it's Peter, uh, the ASIC is doing that, so we can expect most of the ASICs that are doing MaxSec also doing that one? There is a phi function, actually. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, um, okay. It's a similar function down the layer of the stack. So depending on where you are, they implement them differently. Right? We can have an offline conversation later because I don't want to take all of Max's time. Okay, so no, 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 it's okay. We can, talk, we can talk more if you want. I have more details. I can give you more details offline, right? Because now they're telling me to cut my head and, and go. <laughs> and go home. So before I go home, this is a list of sessions, right? As I said, if you're interested in multipod, and I talk also a little bit about multi-site, there is the breakout on Thursday, and then there is one that we talk about multi-data center with Lisp, which Ivan, you seem to, lo to love. Uh, it's also on Thursday, 11.30 to 1, and I put these two sessions, titration and uh, micro-segmentation, because these were two topics that I think Carly initially put in the outline. If you're interested, Juan Lag is going to present this. Uh, Juan is a great presenter. And then there is a, a, a team and uh, Remy are presenting the titration, which is also a new thing and, uh, and very interesting. With this, I also have some link if you want to read on the flight back to US or wherever you need to go for stretch fabric, multipod, and, and multifabric. We will have also multi-site design guide coming later this year when multi-site ships.
Any other question? Yes. Do you have a way to validate your changes before you actually push it to your uh, wall infrastructure? To validate the changes, meaning? Uh, to be sure that what you're pushing will not work. Like uh, you do with the disaster recovery uh, uh, simulation, yeah. essentially. Or maybe uh, you have some models to, uh, to build your configuration. I think, well, I don't know if there is a plan to do that at the multi-site controller level or if it's only, you know, you, you push the changer, you push it only to a, to a, a site or to a subset of the site, right? So you could have a, a subset of infrastructure and you test the change there. I don't know if there could be a, it will be, probably there will be a way of simulating in software, right, and see what is the effect of the change. That's for sure is something that we can do, right? But again, this is part of the detail of the multi-site controller that will come a little bit later.